Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of our Lead the Market video series here at Broadbase. Uh, if you were able to watch the first episode that, uh, that I put live last week, you probably noticed a little bit difference in the background. Um, shot that one in my office overlooking the St. John's River and now I'm, uh, I'm in my house uh, with a virtual Zoom background that we created. Um, obviously that's in response to the uh, COVID-19 situation. And you know, first of all, before we, before we get into this, uh, I just wanna wish everybody uh, you know, good health and hope everyone's staying safe and, uh, and healthy out there. Uh, in surviving this thing and um, as we keep talking about in, in all the um, communication we've done here at Broadbase we hope everybody you know staying productive is it has a you know is fortunate enough to be able to stay productive and comes out of this thing uh, stronger than, than we went in and uh, certainly the case at Broadbase uh, we're highly focused on uh, on serving our clients we're definitely staying busy uh, which is a good thing we're uh, most of us are working remote now and um, put a lot of software tools in place so that uh, we can continue providing a high level of service you know really easy to stay in touch with each other as well and uh, obviously uh, it's good that I had so much practice on Zoom uh, to be able to do these videos but I'm very excited for this episode I have my first ever guest on um, Maria Coppola from Coppola PR joined me to uh, talk about you know marketing in general but uh, also really we're able to kind of frame our conversation around what's going on with the uh, COVID-19 crisis and um, really got some good insight from Maria I think you're gonna really enjoy uh, listening to what she had to say I know no, I definitely took a lot of value away from it, but she gives a lot of tips on, um, you know, what you should look for when you're hiring a PR firm, particularly uh, in times of uh, when there's a lot going on outside, like something, you know, that we're dealing with now. Um, she told some really cool stories about some projects she's worked on. I don't want to spoil it, but one of them involved a lot of explosions, which is always cool. Uh, and just in general, you know, she has some really good tips for, uh, for companies that are looking to become a leader in their market through PR. That's what this video series is all about. So hope you enjoy it. And uh, again, hope you're, you're staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, if there's anything we can do with the agency, feel free to reach out always. And uh, hope you enjoy the video. Take care. All right, welcome everybody to the second episode of our Lead the Market series, where we talk about marketing trends and strategies that can make you a leader in your market. I've got a very special guest today. It's my second ever episode and my first official guest. So very, very excited to be joined by Maria Coppola from Coppola PR. Uh, it's a full service PR consulting and management firm. And she's our PR, uh, go-to PR partner here at Broadbased. We've worked together on dozens of projects, probably well over a decade um, across all kinds of different industries, uh, real estate, healthcare. And uh, like I say, so happy to have her on here. Maria, thank you so much for coming. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're handling everything that's, uh, that's going on out there as it's a uh, the date of this recording is March 27th, so there is a lot going on. Uh, but if there's one thing I know about you, it has me slowing you down one bit. <laughs> My clients are very busy. Everyone's yeah, very busy good. trying to understand uh, coronavirus, the issue, of course, how it impacts their business, and obviously how it impacts their relationships um, with their employees and their clients and their prospective clients. So That's yes, it's been very busy. <laughs> Same. But thank and, you. Uh, and it's, uh, we're thank very you fortunate. For yeah, and thank you for having me on your um, podcast. This is awesome. Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to let you formally introduce yourself here in a second. But first, I want to brag on you a little bit, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> so start off by saying when it when it comes to PR firms, um, and, and particularly when an agency partners with a PR firm and, and, and a company partners with a PR firm, really, uh, integrity is the most important quality to look for in my book. And Maria, I think you just, you absolutely represent um, yourself with the highest degree of integrity to all your clients at every turn. Uh, you always give them honest advice. And I think that's why they're so confident in you. Um, I think that's why obviously we're so confident in you. And I, I think it's a big factor in why you get such amazing results um, in, in the work you do. Um, I have to say also, you probably work as hard if not harder than anybody I know um, that's even <laughs> remotely involved in agency work. Um, I know you've hit me up nights, weekends, and um, you're always hustling, always um, you know working hard for your clients. You probably have the most high energy personality, which I think all the Anybody watching this is going to going to learn a lot about in a few minutes here, um, but you're never bored when you meet when you have a meeting with Maria, um, and you're always going to learn something super valuable about marketing and communications every single time you talk with her. And really, that's why I'm so excited to have you on today. I really think that people are going to take a ton of value. I think um, unfortunately the situation we're dealing with, but um, obviously you know the the expertise and the insight that you can provide is going to help a ton of people. Um, so with that being said, Maria, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us about Coppola PR. Well, I don't know that I could, I, that I don't know that I deserve all the nice things that you just said, but thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is my 20th, I'm entering my 20th year as a public relations uh, consultant here in the market in Jacksonville. Mostly my clients are in Northeast Florida or have some larger presence there. Um, 
And I have spent the entire 20 years as a counselor or a consultant or a contractor, however you, whichever term you like to use. Um, so I've always been on the outside looking in at my clients, sort of like you um, on the agency side, always on the agency side, always, um, always brought in as a, an advisor or a consultant or on a contract term to do a certain project. Um, and so I think it's really important um, that as a consultant, you are able to be, especially in a coronavirus situation, um, you are able to be uh, as unimpacted by maybe internal issues and bias in companies that just exist um, with employees. So I, I always hope to provide that um, outsider perspective with my clients. And of course, all the experience that I have working with hundreds of clients in the last 20 years. I mean, literally, I, I was at an agency for um, seven and a half years before I joined Broadbase, and then I was at Broadbase, Broadbase for five, and this month is my eight year anniversary as my own solo PR yeah. consultant. So yeah. I have had literally hundreds and hundreds of clients. Uh, and I'm so lucky um, to be able to say that, but I have all these experience for all of this experience from all those client projects, all those client issues, all those client crises, um, frankly, to hopefully share with the clients that um, want to work with us. Okay. Well, great. So, looking um, looking at your website, Maria, and, and we'll we'll certainly have uh, have a link to Maria's website uh, in the in the description for this video. But um, you know, looking at your taglines, reputation, media relations, crisis management. Um, I think those are your core services. I know there's a lot more you do as well. Um, but really, you know, as we're dealing with this COVID nineteen crisis, how does um how do all these things kind of work together um, in a in an approach to uh, to handling messaging and communications in, in the in the situation we're in right now? So I'll start with them out of order. So from the media relations side, um, I was a journalist before I was a PR consultant. I spent eight years in journalism um, as a TV and radio reporter before I became a PR person. So um, I have a very good relationship with media outlets, especially here, but I also understand that industry and understand how you can interact best with reporters. Um, not every client that I have is going to have an opportunity to interact with a reporter in this COVID-19 COVID situation. However, every single one of my clients has exposure to the possibility that a news reporter is going to knock on their door as it relates to this situation. Yep. So not everybody has a proactive reason to talk to media about COVID-19 or coronavirus, but everyone every single client that employs more than one person or has a location or has a, any, <laughs> I think 99% of the businesses that we will come in contact with have an exposure related to potential media issue as it relates to COVID-19. Absolutely. So, I, so not, again, not all my clients are gonna have um, a media relations component, but they all could. Um, and when you talk about reputation, I think branding, brand loyalty, um, and your ongoing reputation as a company, this may not be the time to build a reputation, but certainly, certainly um, you can maintain your reputation by continuing to manage your brand communications, manage your brand culture, manage your brand expectations with your, with your, um, with your customers. And I think it's really important that again, not every client will have a chance to build their reputation more effectively in this scenario, but every client has exposure that their reputation could be impacted negatively by this um, crisis. Take for instance, if you are a company that has a complaint with the city of Jacksonville related to you're not allowing your workforce to work from home. I think that's a big exposure for any client right now. Um, even if it, even if you are an essential business, and you you've seen that even essential businesses are having um, their employees call that hotline and complain that they're having to work. Um, so I think reputation is really important. Even if you're just trying to get through this by just you know sort of protecting your reputation and sort of maintaining um, your relationship with your with your public, whoever that is your customers, the public, your media, contacts, whatever. 
Um, and when you talk about crisis management, of course, there's a whole lot more that goes into the kind of crisis management I do um, than maybe, you know, just communications. Crisis management is how are we going to manage this situation, come up with solutions and communicate those solutions. And I I'm usually part of that team that is either, some businesses call it business continuity. Um, some businesses just call it, you know, Know, disaster preparedness. Um, some companies um, call it crisis management, um, but usually I'm part of a team in, in my within my clients that is doing those things that is helping come up with innovative or, or um, best solutions for a situation. Not just how are we going to communicate it. That might that's usually um, you know the final step. Uh, so I do all those things and all the and, and in and in the management of those things. I do all sorts of written communications, all sorts of communications with, uh, with related to strategic plans, um, strategic networking plans, strategic, no, none of any of us is, none of, none of us are networking right now. Um, but I do all those sorts of things for companies um, as, a, as a resource or as an extra hand with their communications team, their marketing team, their, their, um, their communications team, their advertising team, whatever however they describe that department. Um, so did I answer your question? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> I, I wanted you to kind of talk about, you know, your expertise, but I think it's, again, just the timing um, with everything going on. I think it's particularly important that companies understand and, and kind of align their strategies um, with best practices and in public relations. And, you know, you had an article recently, congrats, by the way, in the um, Jacksonville Business Journal, where you were quoted. And I really like what you had to say about, you know, being consistent and you know if you're if you've established a tone in the media or you just have a, a brand identity already don't deviate that from that now because of what's happening in the world stick to it um because you run the risk obviously of, of kind of sounding tone deaf but also that kind of stuff can backfire and, and we've even seen a couple instances of that with with some of our clients in kind of the digital you know advertising space talk a little bit about you know the, the idea of, of being consistent during these times and how important that is Sure, and I think, um, you know, we've seen, so we've been at this, what, about two weeks, today is two weeks since the president um, declared the state of emergency. That's so right. today's the 14th day. Yep. Um, and I think we've learned a lot, all of us have learned a lot about what is, is um, what is maybe best in this scenario and maybe what is um, not so great. Um, and I think the brands that have done a good job in this have stuck to their um, their, the way that they communicate with their clients. They haven't changed it. Um, and I think the brands that have done a good job are also the ones that have simplified this. I do not want to get, and I know that no one wants to get another email saying, wash your hands, right? We're, we, we're, we got that. We know. <laughs> the, right. We know that. So um, I think the, the brands that have come up with a solution or have, or even if they've offered no solution, for instance, um, I think the TJX brands, Marshalls, Home Goods, yeah. um, Marshalls, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, they closed their stores pretty early in this scenario and they were very quick to announce that. They were very quick to um, make that um, strategic decision. And, and so TJ, TJX brands, which is Home Goods, Marshalls, and TJ Maxx, they were very quick in this scenario to close their stores. And I thought that was very interesting. They did a really good job of communicating those things in a very simple, very simplified way. Um, and and they uh, they just I, I feel like they just did a really good job. Um, and they didn't offer a solution. They closed their stores. They're not selling online. They're not selling at the store. You can't go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls or your favorite Home Goods right now. And they don't have they don't have a perfect solution to this. But they made a simplified communication and they said and, and they communicated with their customers in a very well thought out way and they were very quick to do that so i think that's a really good example of some of the better things that we've seen i think Definitely. some of the worst things that we've seen um, it took um this is just my personal announcement this is just my personal analysis this is not um there haven't read a million articles about this but the gojo company that makes purell Oh, products, yeah. Purell, um, you know, which is the leading brand in hand sanitizer, right? Um, 
they made they were completely silent on Facebook um, for very several days after the, the sort of panic buying started and you started seeing empty shelves of say hand sanitizer no they're not the only brand but they are definitely the market leader in that class um, and they were silent and I thought that was interesting because um, when they did started started to when they did start communicating they went um, they went to a they made a decision that they're going to just manufacture products now only for the healthcare, healthcare community right. and the first responder community and oh. that is a and that is a wonderful uh, effort right. and that is sad that they, that they have to um, that they had to announce that that's the only you know group that they can manufacture for right now um, but it took them in my opinion it took them a little a few days to even communicate with anyone on Facebook about what was happening and then when they did start communicating they didn't seem to have a lot of innovative solutions and then they told their customer base which is a lot of individuals like me and you um, that hey you're not going to see our product on the shelves for a very long time um, because we're going to manufacture it only for the healthcare industry and first responders and that's tough that's a tough position to be in um, I don't know anything in the about the background of that, but I felt like they should have been swifter in their comments on Facebook. Um, and uh, I feel like, you know, potentially there was an innovative solution somewhere. But again, the hand sanitizer, uh, the hand sanitizer need must be so great um, that they, they have no choice. You know, they have no choices. I think that's a big part of it is the demand is so high right now and um, I, I agree the timing is is so important particularly if you're a big brand and a market leader um, people do expect some type of comment or some type of stance um, and, and sometimes you don't want to rush but certainly there you do need to say something I think um, particularly when your product or service is kind of at the forefront of, of whatever the crisis actually is which obviously in the Perel's case um, so that's that's really important um, so one of my favorite questions I like to ask, I just want even if I have lunch with people, I love knowing, you know, the advice that you'd have for people that are getting ready to hire a company that does what you do. But I think, again, given the context of this COVID crisis, um, so if companies are rushing out now and saying, look, we really need to get out front and you know, we need to really you know, make media relations a priority, we need to make our reputation a priority, um, as they go through that process, what are some, what's some advice you ask, you would give them? What what type of questions do you recommend they ask if they're interviewing PR firms? Just uh, your overall thoughts on that. Sure. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time talking with clients when they're going to hire a PR firm um, and they really need to understand what they, you know, first and foremost, what is it that they want to accomplish? Um, you know, what's the goal? And if the goal is to be famous, um, you know, there's PR people that do that. Um, if they could, it, and it, but if you have a different goal, um, there's PR people that do that. And so I think you've got to know when you're when you're hiring any, con, you know, contractor firm to work with you, what is it right. that you want to accomplish? Um, it's good to know your budget always. Of course. Um, it's all also good to, to ask a PR firm who on your team is going to do my work. Right. Do you do you feel like you need to go to a big agency where you have bunch of um, team members or do you feel like a solo uh, PR person might be able to accomplish the goal and if a solo PR person is the right choice for you um, you need to ask you know you're not going to have any guests who's going to do the work right you're going to know that a solo PR person is going to do their work going through them, um, right? but but it's always good to ask who is going to be my who's going to be my who's going to do the work um, for me and my company is it you senior consultant or is it someone else in the agency right. um and so and i'm neither one are uh, better than the other they sure. are all good for certain scenarios um but if you want a senior consultant um experienced in business to do your work then you should find that kind of person you may not get that at a traditional agency with a bunch of layers of management and account executives and that type of structure. Um, but those teams can often accomplish a lot for a company, um, maybe even more than a solo PR person can. Sure. So I think it's good to know who's gonna do 
who's going to be my PR person? And are they going to be available if I have a scenario after five o'clock or <laughs> on Saturday? Um, you know, figure out what kind of level of support your company is going to need. And I think right now, um, companies are looking at this came on very quickly, especially yeah. for the restaurant industry, especially for the bars, hospitality. restaurants, yeah. hospitality, retailers. Yeah. This came on very quickly. Um, a lot of those folks and those kinds of companies did not have a plan for what do you do if the governor or the president says you can't, you have to close your doors. You or, do. yeah. Right. Um, and so not everyone can afford a big crisis manager, um, but it's good to just take a, now all these brands have had a chance to figure out what to do in this scenario. It's nice to sit down one day when we're not in a crisis and put together a little plan. It could be one sheet of paper, yeah. put together a plan of what happens the next time I have a scenario that comes upon me that I didn't choose that really no one could accurately predict. No, no um, for sure. Yeah, this comes from external. I don't control it. It's external. It, it came upon me on a Friday afternoon and and it's completely out of, con out of my control. And not only that, I don't even know the timeline for how long I'm going to be That's dealing just, with this. Yeah, there's no, there's no shelf life on this, unfortunately. There, right. There's no, I mean, the governor, um, the governor is having a press conference this afternoon. And I think um, we're starting to see, we're two weeks into this, we're starting to see maybe what the roadmap looks like, but none of us know. Um, and so having a little mini crisis plan, even if you do it yourself, is a great exercise for right now because any day, <laughs> any day of the week, you can have this scenario. It doesn't have to be a pandemic. It can be a fire that that um, that disables your business or levels your building. It can be an employee that gets in trouble. It can be an internet, uh, a viral oh, internet no. video. <laughs> you know, it can be any of it. Doesn't have to be a pandemic that causes you this, this major issue. Um, so, you know, thinking about that is a really important thing to do right now. Definitely. And as far as, um, you know, from the crisis management side with regards to, um, you know, research, it, you know, how can you, um, I mean, I know you, you have obviously all the case studies and, and everything else. What's the best way for a company to really, is it, because, you know, when you ask for references, you know, someone's only going to give you the, the, the people that really like you and, and, you know, the clients that you've done a really good job with. Um, from a crisis management perspective, what are some ways that companies can really kind of investigate to see if a PR firm has handled the type of challenges um, that they know they're going to be facing? Sure. I think just ask them. Um, I can tell a client all the crises that I've dealt with in my time as a PR consultant, and they range from um, CEO got a DUI to a major um, eight-year lawsuit and um, a disagreement with the city of Jacksonville over um, city incentives. So, I mean, you just ask, have you had these scenarios before? Have you dealt with this scenario? And then what was the outcome of that That's scenario? Really important. Um, there's not always a perfect outcome. Um, crisis managers will tell you that sometimes coming out of it in a neutral position Maybe the best thing we can be a win. for, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just I, I think it's pretty easy to sit with someone and say, "Hey, have you have you had this scenario before? And what did what happened on the other end?" But I can tell you right now, if you are going to hire a pandemic crisis person, um, you know, there weren't very many people Not a lot going of. into <laughs> there weren't very many people going into this pandemic except maybe folks that work at hospitals right. um, or Red Cross or some other, you know, sort of disaster um, related agency, that, that, that was the only folks that had this level, uh, you know, any level of experience with this sort of crisis. Um, and so I think just asking your PR firm, how comfortable are you when it's not a fun day? How comfortable are you working with us when it's not a proactive rainbows and kitty cats day? 
um, because we are all going to have those days. Um, And it's not something that all PR people want to do, nor is it something they like to do. Right, exactly. Um, I either, either, I'm a very odd PR person um, in that I really enjoy helping my clients get through those scenarios. Absolutely. Um, But it is high stress. It is often painful. It is, um, it is not something that all PR, like all PR people are comfortable doing, nor do they want to do it. Um, So find, find, just most PR people will tell you how comfortable they are doing that sort of level of strategic crisis management if you ask them. Um, And again, some just don't want to, and some don't focus on that. And so I I think it's just, it's just a question that you should ask. Sure. That's always good. You know, it's, um, you you always want to make sure that again, it's the right fit. And I think it's, it's great advice to, in particular to see, you know, just kind of gauge and, and, and evaluate for yourself how they respond to see if it is something that, you know, they're willing to roll up their sleeves and really get, you know, deep into an issue that, um, you know, could potentially have a, almost a make or break kind of crisis. So I think it's really good advice. Um, so let's have a little fun now. I think we've, we've talked a lot about the uh, COVID crisis and I think with good reason, but let's have a little fun. Can you talk about any you know, unique projects or, or cool projects that you've worked on over the past few years? I know I have some that I, I think are pretty cool, but I wanted to give you the opportunity. And um, Is there anything you can share with us? I am so lucky that I am always around innovative, cool, amazing companies doing cool stuff, but Certainly, one of the highlights of the last couple of years is the demolition company that took down, well, they're still doing it, but that took down the um, power park, the St. John's River That's Power Park with JEA. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that as one that you thought was really interesting. That was really that cool. The demo company is a really interesting project because they're not from Jacksonville. Um, they are in a growth industry. There's a lot of coal-fired um plants that are coming down across the country. They saw a unique opportunity to expand their business and have a division that just focuses on the expert, um, safe takedown of power parks across the country. So they saw it as a growth opportunity. They got this project in Jacksonville um, and they, it was the biggest one they'd ever done. Um, And they knew smartly, um, I think, they knew that if they didn't um, they needed to leverage their possible media coverage in Jacksonville and in their hometown, which is um, just outside of Buffalo, New York. Okay. They needed to maximize their media coverage, especially in business, related to this project they were doing in Jacksonville, if they could do it successfully um, and, and show that they had the capabilities to do everything that was needed here. Um, it was crucial to their their ability to build that business division because they were in the middle of, I don't know, they had dozens of project proposals out across the country to do the same project um, that they were doing here. And most of those things are done on low bid or at least on, you know, a bid, a competitive bid situation. And so you're, you're, um, you know, you're going to be up against 15 other companies uh, and so they needed to take this project and turn it into um, a larger reputational uh, uh, opportunity for them. And they were able to do that partly because they were highly skilled and highly successful at the implosions that they did for JEA. And they were, of course, all the media, they love, <laughs> they love implosions. Implosions are fun. Implosions are cool, you know, implosions are neat, you know, they're always just um, a day when people just, they just, they love that. Um, And of course, yeah, and of course the audience, the reason why the news media loves it is because the audience loves it. Everybody loves it. Facebook loves it. People at home that watch the nightly news love it. People love to see that sort of thing. Yeah, it was really cool. So, but they took this cool point in time. They had two cool points in time. They took these two cool points in time where they were doing something that they could have done probably easily without a whole lot of media coverage. They could have done it. They could have moved on. They could, and and honestly, it might've been easier from a business perspective to just do it, do the thing without having the crowd, without having the event, without having, you know, to manage these other components. But they were very smart. They said, if we don't, maximize this 
cool opportunity, the biggest power park at the time that was getting taken down by implosions, you know, we're missing a huge business opportunity. So they hired me to just do their work here. Um, and it was just so cool. Um, and again, we got them also news coverage in Buffalo for what they were doing okay. here. Buffalo media would never have known what they were doing if we didn't help tell that story. Cause they don't know, they don't of course. frankly care of what happens in Jackson. Um, but here was this amazing company from Buffalo doing this work here. And so they got some really great business news out of it in their hometown, which was, which was really cool. Awesome. So that was a really cool project. <laughs> well, it, it definitely, I, I would agree from the outside looking in and I can only imagine, you know, setting all that up. It was like a sporting event, how they had like an audience there that was, <laughs> they're waiting for it to happen. Yeah, and, really cool. and JEA and JEA was the minority, uh, was the majority partner in that, in that, um, in that power park ownership. And FPL was a smaller, was the minority right. shareholder at that power park. But JEA and FPL did an amazing job with those events and the people and the um, and and most of that was employees that had worked there, and retired from there, worked there a long time. Some of those employees that came to those events um, had been folks that had built the power park from the ground up when it when it was built in the eighties. So it was a so JEA and FBL just did an amazing job telling their stories about especially to that important piece of their. Um, workforce in yep. Jacksonville. Um, they did a really, uh, a, an amazing job. But again, I was just hired by the demolition company to make sure right. that the demolition company didn't get forgotten in that. Um, and they weren't. Um, and also they had really never, they had really, you know, these are, these are not people that make it a, their business to talk to reporters. Right. Um, but reporters love them. Oh, they were so, you know, they don't want to talk to PR people in that. They want to talk to the guys that do the work. They want to talk to, they want to, those guys were so interesting. I can so imagine. So neat. Yeah, it was so, um, it was so neat to work with them and put them in front of media when that's not their natural, it's not their natural state. That's not something that they do every day. They go to work, they tear down buildings. They don't deal with media. Right. That's not their, you know, that's not a natural place for them. Even and so that was really media. fun. So that was really fun. But I will tell you that, um, that another thing I'm very, very proud of um, that won a little award um, was the work that I did for the Kemmer Museum of Art and Gardens yeah. when they did the Augusta Savage exhibition. And interestingly, uh, while I was doing that work for the for just proactively promoting the, the largest exhibition that the Kemmer had ever uh, curated by itself, um, and the first time that they had had an exhibition that they curated, packaged, and sent off to be shown at other museums across the country, it was a really important business moment for them. It was really important. But right in the middle of doing that, about a week after we launched, we opened the show, they announced that their new leader was joining the museum. So I did all the strategic communications related to the new executive director who joined the museum um, a year and a half ago. It's been about a year now since we did the communications, but right. a year and a half ago is when he joined the, the team. And so um, it was a really interesting project because we had to shift from this amazing uh, exhibition that we were doing to, oh my goodness, <laughs> they've hired a new leader um, and all the communications related to that. Um, and. Uh, and so those are some projects that um, while while the comer originally hired me to do the you know the proactive positive piece for the museum, it, there came a day where I got to do the positive things related to the new leader, but that was a very strategic project that needed to be managed um, and could have been you know an issues management situation. Um, it turned out it was a wonderful community announcement um, but I was very lucky to work on that project with them. And so a lot of people on the market saw that, saw those communications and recognized what a what a great job the Cumberland Museum did then with their announcement. Definitely. And uh, again, I'm going to put your uh, your website link in when I post all this. And uh, if you go on Maria's website, you can see a list of all her accreditations, certifications, awards, and uh, really to get an idea of, of just the, the experience she has and also uh, just the amazing quality of work that she's provided and the outcomes she's gotten for her clients. So be sure to check that out. 
And uh, I guess Maria, just uh, you know, as we wrap up, some final thoughts. You know, do you see or what changes do you see if you can put on kind of your you know, look into the future a little bit? What do you see happening now with communications and, and public relations? Um, you know, while we weather this uh, COVID outbreak and then also, you know, afterwards uh, when things return to normal, do you, what do you see is uh, if any changes come down? Um, I, I think everybody's trying to answer that question uh, today. What is going to happen? When are we going to get back to normal? Is there a normal to get back to? Um, I think there will be. Um, I think um, one of the things that as this goes on and as it sort of um, doesn't have an end day, you know, we don't know the end day yet, um, there's going to be uh, times when as a PR person or a communicator or a marketing person or an advertising person that you just, you have something that you have to do, you have to sell, you have to handle, you, you know, you have to, you have to manage your communication. And it would be very, um, I think the hardest thing that we have to do as communicators is recognize that it's not normal. <laughs> right now, it's not normal. It's not a normal day. It's, right, it's not, it, it's, yeah. Um, and so how do you go about conducting your business's business um, without, you know, looking callous to the situation? Yeah. And, and I think we're all trying to answer that. I think we're all trying to answer that question. Absolutely. But but PR is going to change um, from this. I think that lots of people got new experience in uh, pandemic communications. Um, I think that the valuable PR people in this in 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 this scenario have been helping their clients weather this uncertainty, um, even if they're just a small partner on how do you continue to communicate? How do you, you know, what's the value in continuing to communicate? Um, lots of, uh, I think lots of people, uh, lots of PR people are working outside <laughs> of their regular scope of work maybe Absolutely. for their clients <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, I think that is, um, I, I think everybody has, um, right now has to remain really flexible um, and I think the most valuable PR people are helping their clients, no matter what the assignment is, right. um, no matter what the trouble, you know, what the problem is, because none of us have been here before. I don't know. It's, so, it's such uncharted waters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no one has been here, but I mean, we've all been through hurricanes. We've been through evacuations. We've been through, I mean, we've been through those things, but those things are completely different. It really does. It feels like they, they kind of come and go. Now the impact obviously could last from a, from a storm as we've seen, but um, at least it's gone. And then the sun comes out with this. It's kind of like, when, when is it going to be gone? And, and what does, what does gone mean? What's it going to look like when it is gone? So uh, sure. one of the things, a couple of the things that we've seen is obviously we're talking here on zoom. Um, I think a lot of companies are using zoom now. They've kind of become like you were saying, Purell before zoom is, seems like on social media, they've, uh, they've really been able to capitalize on obviously the need to, to move people virtual now that, that companies are, are advising work from home and in some cases mandating it. So, um, you know, virtual meetings, uh, if you're, if you're talking about, you know, digital marketing, you're going to see a lot of things shift, um, to like webinar or virtual events where, you know, you can kind of build an audience using that. Um, and then the second thing is like Facebook live. We're, we're working on one of our clients that we work with together, um, in healthcare in particular, they're, um, really ramping up with Facebook Live. And it's proven to be a really good tool, not only to engage with clients, but again, from a marketing perspective, um, when you go live on Facebook from your company page, it alerts all your followers that you're doing a live broadcast. So it's kind of like um, if, if your show came on on TV that you wanted to watch, you would get a text or something. So it's really neat. Um, and just, you know, part of the pivoting that, that we're really, you know, having to do as an agency uh, to continue to provide value to our clients and give them the help that they need. Because like you say, there's no playbook for this. There's no, there's no, you know, you can't go online and do some research and figure this out. You're, you're doing it as you go. And um, it's been very, very interesting, certainly very challenging. And, uh, you know, we've welcomed it at, at, uh, at, with Jan and I. I mean, we've um, really, it, it's, we've enjoyed stepping up for our clients and, and having to learn all this and, and, and having to do it so quickly. Um, it's been really interesting. And again, we just hope everyone's staying safe and, and, and that we get through this and uh, come out the other end stronger. Yes, I agree. And it's been interesting to me because a, a bunch of brands that I like on Facebook um, have, I've gotten the alerts about they're going live on Facebook. Right. And some of it, I don't care. Some of it, I do not care about. 
Um, but I have been very interested in uh, the governor's amazing yes, very use so. of Facebook Live. Um, he has done, uh, I think, a tremendous job, governor of Florida, tremendous job on his own Facebook. Um, and of course, you know, I, I'm getting all those alerts from all the TV stations and all the other things, all the other brands that I um, watch. But I have watched many of his press conferences from his own Facebook right. Live. On. And that's been really well done. Um, I have a client that's going to make a big announcement next week um, about a really cool um, Facebook Live of uh, virtual um, arts and uh, health and wellness um, uh, 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 seminar, not seminar, seminar is not good. They're going to do some classes yep. on their Facebook Live for free, um, you know, for people that are at home going crazy. Um, being stuck at home yeah. and so those are going to be really fun and they're going to use Facebook live and that is not that's not something that you know they've done a lot of so it's going to be interesting oh. to see them do that and they are embracing that and I'm sh and they're gonna they have a really good partner in that and we're gonna I think we're all gonna learn a lot <laughs> when we launch those in a couple weeks Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Maria, for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're, you're the first guest we've had on the uh, on the series. So again, thank you so much. Um, obviously, I know you're going to stay busy. I know if anyone's coming out of this strong, it's going to be you. And uh, again, really appreciate you taking the time. Chris, thank you so much. I just love the idea of you sharing this great information with your clients. I think it's just, it's just a wonderful resource. Thank you. I appreciate that. And enjoy your weekend. Um, I know uh, you're a dog mom, so uh, everyone, I know you got any plans or is it just still every weekend you just kind of make it up as you go, it seems like. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden I have eight weekends or so of the next eight weeks that there's absolutely nothing on the calendar. This is not a scenario that I'm used to. Not there's usually something on the calendar every weekend. I think um, we have been practicing social distancing by getting on our boat. And so I think I we're you. probably going to go do some boating, which is our f absolute favorite thing about living in Northeast Florida is the water and getting out on the water is our, our is just our absolute favorite thing. So we'll probably do a little bit of that. There you go. That's like you say, perfect example of uh, staying distant, right? So enjoy <laughs> absolutely. It. It's supposed to be really nice. It's really hot though. So be careful. I know, uh, you know, put the sunscreen on and stay safe, but yeah, it should be a really pretty weekend for that. So enjoy. Thank you, Chris. Thanks All so right. much for having me.